All right, I'm just winging this video, but <clears throat> uh, I'm going to describe how a, uh, an EVAP system works. It's one of the most, I don't know, everybody hates EVAP systems, and it, but it's really one of the easiest um, or simplest, and uh, I don't know, I think it's really not a big deal. Um, and it's isolated from the rest of the car. It has nothing to do with performance, unless, say, your purge valve is stuck wide open or something like that. But um, it's really just emissions type stuff. Um, and the whole purpose of it is to um, let you know that the fuel system basically isn't sealed. Um, so therefore you're letting fuel vapors out into the atmosphere without being f filtered through a charcoal canister. Um, I'm going to try to do this like real quick and easy so it's not long and drawn out. Basically, you've got your engine here. Okay, here's your engine. You've got on your engine, or up front somewhere, you're going to have a purge valve. So let's just say this is a 5.3 liter and your purge valve is just sitting right here. Okay, this is just a valve. It's an open and closed valve. All right, now back here you've got your fuel tank. And on your fuel tank, or off of your fuel tank, you're going to have a charcoal canister, which filters the, the fuel vapors into the atmosphere. Now, a lot of times it's attached to the gas tank, sometimes it's not. There's hoses going in between. Um, off of the charcoal canister, you're going to have a vent valve. Um, and if let's say you're working on a Chrysler, um, they have what's called a leak detection pump. Um, it basically all does the same thing. It just works in a different way. Uh, I'm going to do the more common type. Okay. Uh, on your fuel tank, you're going to also have a fuel pressure sensor. Okay. Um, that's going to measure vacuum in the fuel system in inches of mercury. You're going to have a, uh, you got your fuel pump, which is sealed, okay? So when you put your fuel pump in, you drop it down the hole and you bolt it in, um, and there's a seal in there. Or you, you know, there's a ring that you spin or something. Either way, the fuel pump is sealed. You've also got your fuel filler neck and gas cap. Okay, <clears throat> this is basically your entire EVAP system here, aside from the hose that runs to the tank from the purge valve right here. Okay, so we got the purge valve. Um, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go all out here and use red to label stuff. Okay, so we got purge. Uh, it looks pink. Either way, you've got your vent valve, charcoal canister, char roll, charcoal canister, uh, fuel tank. Okay, right here you've got your fuel pressure sensor all right and when evap systems come into play yeah you've got control codes and stuff like that the most common are usually small evap leaks and large evap leaks probably should have refreshed my memory on the actual code numbers. I think a large is a P0455 and a small is a P0451. I believe. I'm going to correct that though in the video if I'm wrong. There's also like P0440 which is a control issue and that still ends up being one of the problems that causes one of these codes also. It just depends on how that vehicle determines that. Alright, so anyways, <clears throat> literally what happens is, 
And, and like I said, the whole purpose of the EVAP system is to determine if there's a leak anywhere in this system so that you don't have fuel vapors um, venting in the atmosphere without first being filtered through the charcoal canister. Um, and because they, you have to have a sealed system to do that, you have to have vent valves and stuff um, which are going to be open by default when you have the vehicle off. So on a hot day, you've got fuel vapors. Instead of expanding and creating pressure in the tank, um, when the vehicle's off, it's just going to free flow out into the charcoal canister and then out the vent valve. Um, but what happens is, is when you start your vehicle and you're driving it, your uh, purge valve is going to open and your vent valve is going to close. Okay, so purge valve is going to be open. Well, it's not completely open. We'll just say it's open because this is going to be a basic thing. Basically what happens is it opens and closes um, many, many times. You can actually hear it like click. Um, and what it's doing is it's slowly applying engine vacuum to the fuel system. Your vent valve is going to be closed. This doesn't um, go on and off. This just closes when it's trying to determine um, whether or not you have a leak or not. Okay, this is run off a duty cycle, basically. Uh, the purge valve is. Now the purge valve gets its um, vacuum from the engine intake system. Okay, so here's, let's say you've got a whole, uh, in the case of 5.3, your... Um, purge valve is just plopped directly into the intake and you got a bolt that holds it on you've got electrical wires that control it uh, some cars have a hose that comes from the intake that goes to the purge valve um, you've also got an electrical connector here on the vent valve um, purge valve and vent valve they're basically identical they look the same usually um, they're both usually a two wire um, deal so what happens is, is when you're driving, this is duty cycled and let's just say open. This is closed, the vent valve, and it applies engine vacuum over a period of time to the fuel system. Um, and that includes anything from the purge valve uh, through this hose going to the tank. Uh, it includes anything that's attached to the tank that has a seal on it. It includes um, there's an engine vacuum going up to your gas cap uh, through the charcoal system and the vent. Okay, so when that when this is closed and this is open, it's slowly applying that engine vacuum. Now you've got electrical wires coming off your fuel tank pressure sensor also, which is going to monitor. Basically, what's going to happen is it's it's going to suck the vacuum down in the system to a certain point. And then when it reaches that desired point, it's going to close the purge valve and keep the vent valve closed. And then over another period of time, the fuel tank uh, pressure sensor is going to monitor that vacuum and look to see if it holds that vacuum. Now, if it loses vacuum over a long period of time, then that would be considered a small evap leak. If it loses the vacuum over a short period of time, that's going to be a large evap leak. <clears throat> that's the difference. Okay, so usually, like, let's say you forgot to put your gas cap back on, that's going to give you a P0455 for a large, uh, large evap leak. Um, let's say you just didn't tighten the gas cap down enough. Um, that could be a small evap leak. P0451, I think. All right. Let's say you've got a you know deteriorated hose here, or you've got um, a bad seal here, or a cracked um, gas cap seal. You know, like dry rotted. It's got actual cracks in it and can't seal properly. Let's say you dropped your gas cap on the ground and the the valve that's in it, the relief valve, 
um, is cocked sideways and wide open, even though you tighten your gas cap, it's going to still throw a large evap code. Let's say your fuel tank pressure sensor is bad and it's reporting the wrong pressures. I mean, it might be holding the engine vac or the vacuum in the fuel system, but it's the sensor isn't working properly. So uh, you'd get a code for that. That'd probably be more likely like a P0440 uh, for a control issue. Um, let's say the fuel filler neck seal that goes in the tank, let's say that's bad. Um, that would be one of those two codes. Let's say your uh, vent valve. Let's say they're working, but they're not sealing completely, whether it's because of dirt or something like that, or just a weak uh, purge valve or vent valve. That's going to cause one of those codes. If your purge valve is stuck open, that's going to cause one of these codes, plus it's probably going to cause a, a lean code. It is possible, I've seen it. Um, Alright, well, I just completely lost my train of thought. I think it's my cats. My cats are like going nuts. I just fed them too. Oh, what I was going to say uh, also, your charcoal canister, the reason that uh, if, you, if you look on your fuel tank or whatever, a lot of times on your gas cap or on your dash, you'll say do not top off. Um, the reason for that is um, a lot of times, most of the time, your hoses and whatnot that feed your charcoal canister are kind of like right at the top. Um, if you fill your gas tank up too high, Okay, to where it's coming up the neck, that's going to force fuel into the charcoal canister, which basically has like a paper filter. Um, and this is especially bad on Chryslers. Like the uh, late 90s Dodge Ram pickups are notorious for it. Just that setup. What will happen is the charcoal bits that are in the canister will end up getting sucked through your entire EVAP system. Okay, so it'll get sucked right up and it'll clog all the lines and everything. Um, it'll even get stuck in your purge valve. In which case you basically have to like blow all the lines out or replace everything. Um, but that's basically everything that you need to understand about how an EVAP system works. It's completely separate. If you have an EVAP leak, it's not going to cause you to break down. You're not going to get, you're probably not going to get worse gas mileage. You're going to be hurting the environment maybe a tiny bit more. You're going to have a check engine light that you're going to have to get taken care of before you get it through inspection. But, uh, you know, if you're, if you're away from inspection, then um, don't freak out over it. As far as finding the problem, um, that can range from a lot of things and, and as a mechanic it depends on the vehicle if it's a GM I pretty much know it's gonna probably be a purge valve or a vent valve and they're probably both be, you know gonna be bad soon so I usually would replace both if I you know did a general inspection and saw that all the hoses look good and everything like that and that they've never been changed um, Chrysler's, it's usually hoses. If it's a Chrysler minivan, it's usually like a three inch little rubber hose that's right behind the intake. Um, all the vehicles vary as to what usually causes it. Um, but anything, anything that allows vacuum to escape from this sealed system here. And when I say sealed, I'm talking from vent valve, everything to the, uh, you know, the, 
the gas cap to the seal for the filler neck to whatever attaches the canister to the tank to the fuel tank itself that can't have holes in it um, any of the lines in the system everything's got to be sealed and your valves have to work okay so um, as a mechanic we would put like a smoke machine and hook it into the purge system here actually it would go in here uh, we blow smoke through the system and look for smoke to be exiting from somewhere that it shouldn't be. Uh, you can also use a vacuum pump. Uh, you could remove your uh, purge valve and uh, close it with. You can you can close it with a scanner. You can do it with like a a power probe or um, if you really needed to, you could do it with you know some wires as long as you got positive and negative on it. <coughs> Um, the vent valve is naturally open and when you're running the vehicle and it's checking everything it's going to close it the purge valve is naturally closed and that will open so that's the main difference between a purge and a vent is they work opposite okay so if you turn the vehicle off your purge valve is going to be closed and your vent valve is going to be open even though they look the same, they're just it's just reversed. I don't know. I think that about sums it up. I know this is really sloppy and, and crappy, but I don't know. Hopefully, it helps somebody. So there you go. Thanks for watching.